Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMadeVince.com and in this video today it's another fix it video, another video where I've bought something faulty off eBay and I'm going to do my best to repair it. So here we have it. Now this one here is apparently water damaged. It is an Amazon tablet. Now I think this might be the HD one because I do have one of these that's quite a bit smaller and I got it for the bargain price of £30 because it was Father's Day or something like that, normally they're £50. I believe these ones are £80 or £90, something like that. So let me show you the eBay listing and I'll tell you what's wrong with it. So it was up for £5 but I actually put a best offer in at £4 and it was accepted. So if you have a look up here, it says there, accepted the offer of four pounds. So altogether I paid six pound ninety for this. So if I could get it working, it would actually be quite a good uh, quite a good buy. So it just says Kindle Fire 8 not working. And the description says Kindle Fire 8 tablet on its own, good condition externally, some signs of wear, was dropped in water and now does not turn on past the Amazon loading page. So let's turn this thing on and see exactly what is meant by that. Right, okay, so the on is up here. Right, okay, nothing's happening at all, but it might be completely flat, so let's plug it in. Now, with water damaged devices, it's best actually not to plug them in, to just take them apart straight away and clean them. But again, for the purpose of the video, I kind of need to show it not working to begin with, because remember, entertainment reasons. Right, let's see now if it's going to turn on. Oh, there we go. Right, so we've got a, a battery symbol there. Let's turn it on. Right, I've got a feeling that it's completely discharged, so... I wonder whether I should leave it charged for a bit, or should I take it apart straight away? I can't even see any screws or anything on this. Right, so that's just where you put the micro SD in. I think it must be a case of just getting pry tools and uh, prying down here to take this apart. Oh, here we go. Let's see what it does now. So there's definitely some life there, isn't there? I'm just going to fast forward through this bit to see what it does. Right, okay, so you can see what's happening there. This is what I would call a boot loop, and I had this on one of my Android phones. Now, I was told this was software related. Basically, everybody told me it was software related, but on my phone, I dropped it, and the problem happened straight away. So, I'm not saying it's not software related, but uh, I'm wondering if there's something in there that basically that it can't recognize the software because maybe there's an actual hardware issue itself. Now I've been reading up about this and basically there's a sort of technique you can use. What you do is you turn the tablet on, so I'm just going to, well it's gone dead now anyway, you turn it on by holding it down and then you press the, uh, you plug the charging cable in while still holding it for about 40 seconds and then you release it when it turns on. So I think it's worth a go. I think it's highly unlikely that it's going to that it's going to happen, but let's give it a go. So I'm holding the power button now and now I'm going to plug in the power cable and I'm going to keep this button held in for around about 40 seconds. Right, okay, so that's been at least 40 seconds, and it's not doing anything, it's still just doing the normal boot loop stuff, so uh, it's uh, obviously faulty. Let's take this thing apart and see if we can see any corrosion, because we might be lucky, it might not be badly water damaged. Either way, it's still going to be interesting to see the inside of it. So, uh, yeah, let me get a few tools set up. So I'm going to be using my pry tools to try and get this screen up away from the edge here. It all already looks a little bit loose on this area here. So this is where I'm going to start and I'm just going to work my way around. I've also got like these uh, suckers that I got from the iPhone. So maybe uh, uh, an iPhone replacement kit. Oh, I don't believe it. I've just broken it. I've just broken the screen. Ah, oh, what a terrible start. Let me turn it on and see if the actual screen's still working apart from that break. Oh, how, oh it just made a noise there. How awful's that? Oh, gutted about that. Oh well. Note to self, don't use that again. Right, okay, let's uh, <laughs> let's go into it. Let's go into it here, see if I can break the rest of it up. 
So I'm lucky that the whole screen didn't smash. I mean, if I could get it working, you could definitely live with that corner being cracked there. I kind of went in the best place. certainly a toughie to get into I can see that there's little indentations here and here so I think the idea is that this clicks into place so there must be uh, it must be kind of having to lever it out nearly out it's just this top corner has been a bit stubborn wow it really doesn't want to come out in this corner There we go, right. Wow, that was a bit of an epic. Well, it doesn't look bad at all. Look at that. Let me zoom right in there. That looks absolutely... That looks perfect. Oh, so look, are these little clips as well that go in? Or is it just the edges? No, I think it's just the edges that keep it in. Yeah, it's just these things, isn't it? Look, these little things that keep it in here. They go into the home here, here, and all the way around the edges. Right, okay, I'm really gutted that I broke the screen there, you know. Really gutted. I wonder on this one, is it a software-related problem? And they just, maybe after it was dropped in water, maybe it did work for a few months, and they just kind of assumed that it was... Uh, that the water damage eventually got to it. I mean, it looks absolutely perfect. I can't see any signs of corrosion at all. Look around. Unless, of course, it could be on the other side of this board. Let's dismantle it further. I mean, if I can't find any water damage, then it is going to be a case of possibly seeing if there's any way we can get, if it's software related, see if there's any way we can get the software back onto it again. Right, so the battery should be 3.7 volts. Let's see what it's measuring. Three point four. So not too bad. Let's take this board out here if I can. Everything, all the connectors look absolutely fine. This is a little camera. Oh, I'm really struggling on this one already. I can't see how to take this board out. So we've got little clips here. So the board needs to obviously come out this way. But look, I've undone the screws here. I don't know what I'm missing. I can't find any other screws, yet the board is loose here but it's completely solid over this side here. I'm wondering whether there's more screws hidden under the shield or not. I'm going to have to pop them off because I really can't see what's happening here. Right, so there's nothing under there. Right, so it is just stuck down. It's just stuck down with that little bit of amazingly strong sticky tape there. Right, let me have a look at this side off the board. It looks perfect. There is a very, very small bit. Look here. Can you see here, there's a tiny bit of what looks like water damage there, and that corresponds to just here by the test pads. But it doesn't look bad whatsoever. That's the only bit that I can see. And I suppose it would make sense because it is by the micro SD card. I'm going to get my little eye loop out and I'm going to have a look at that micro SD card. 
Right, when I look really closely using the eye loop, I can actually see slight traces of water damage around the place. So let me zoom right in to show you. Right, so this is by the micro SD card here. And if you have a look, you can see just a small uh, little bit around here. So that can be cleaned easily. Now, where else do I see it? See here? Can you see it looks slightly blue around here? And uh, in this area here, there seems to be a little bit. I've seen some up here somewhere, that was it. See this little chip here? Number 12 or whatever it is, if you have a look here, can you see under that? That looks a little bit dodgy, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some IPA and I'm going to give this a really good scrub just to see if it, uh, if it makes anything, makes any difference or not. Now normally with water damage stuff it is a nightmare, but with this one here, this one might well be fixable. Okay, so this is what I'm using, so let's give it a real good clean. Let's see if anything changes. Right, I've given that a good soak in, so I'm just going to temporarily just put this uh, the ribbon cable and the battery connector back on, see if it makes any difference at all. Let's see if it's going to turn on now. Right, nothing's happening, but that's probably because the battery's completely flat. It's not doing anything. Right, okay, it's completely dead at the moment. Well, these two wires have broken here, but that's fine. That's just for the speaker. That's not going to stop it from turning on. And everything's connected back up again. Surely we don't need this one to make it work, do we? See what voltage is going into the battery when the charging leads in. Three point five. Well, I'm already a bit stumped. Why was it turned on before and it's not now? Okay, I haven't got the camera connected, but surely that doesn't make a difference. All right, now let's try it. Right, okay, I am completely and utterly stumped on this one already. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep messing around with it. I'm going to take the board out again, put it back in, uh, just in case there's some bad connection. But everything went back in nice and easy. I can also see just a tiny bit of corrosion on the screen connector, just, uh, just, where, the tip is, just where the tip is here. So I'm just going to give that a quick clean. This is really, really confusing me because I haven't actually done anything. All I've done is clean it, and now I've got uh, I've got nothing at all. It is completely and utterly dead. Right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and use my multimeter, see if I can see any voltages anywhere. So for example, I've got the micro USB cable connected in. Maybe this isn't making a good contact here or something. So I'm just going to measure around in different places, see if I can work out what's going on. Right, so the switch is OK, because listen, I've got it on continuity. And when I press it, it's 
is going on. Also, I've got five volts coming out of the, the USB. If I go to DC voltage, go to here, you can see I've got five volts. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep working my way through the board, see if I can find anything obvious, and then I'll get back to the video if I do. Right, this has already completely baffled me. I, I really don't know by just cleaning it why, with alcohol, why it's uh, suddenly not even trying to turn on. There's no display at all. Unless, of course, when I crack the display, it is now actually broken now, even though it wasn't broken when it first of all cracked. I really don't know. But anyway, I'll plug this USB uh, thing here to see if it's drawing anything. And it is. It's drawing 0.39 amps. So, I mean, it is charging. And if I have my multimeter here and go across it it is slowly going up so I'm going across the actual battery now with the USB plugged in and it's reading uh, 3.7 volts 3.753 and if I keep that on there for quite a while then it will start to go up to 54 onwards so I mean the charge is definitely going in I think what I'm going to do I mean there's more charge in it now than there was before, and before there was a display and now there's not. I think I'm going to leave this plugged in for a couple of hours just to see if it does you know, bring up the charge a little bit more. Strange. It's really, this one's really, really, yeah. Uh, I feel like I've sort of already lost the battle on it and it's only just begun. But anyway, let me leave it for a while just in case it is the fact that the battery is uh, is not putting enough power into it to actually turn it on. Right, the hours are disappearing here fast. I'm really not getting anywhere with this whatsoever. But if you look at the ribbon cable that goes down this way here. Now, I'm thinking that maybe this one up here is for the digitizer and this one here is for the LCD display. Well, if you have a look here, it does have an arrow pointing down and it says to LCD. And if you look at this side here, look really closely look at the contact down at the very bottom there so maybe when I undid it earlier and put it back in again I kind of damaged it here but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up this bit just in case these are the things that's stopping it from turning on right okay we're starting to get somewhere now if you look I've gone into the menu you know where you can for example uh, clear it and stuff like that reboot system now so let's see I don't know how I'm going to move up and down I presume it's using these buttons here Yes, it is, yeah, look. Right, so to get to this one, what I had to do is hold down the, I can't remember, the down button, I think, and the power button at the same time. Then it came to here. Right, let's see now. Let's go to reboot system now and see what happens. So let's go back up. Now I'm thinking, hold on, volume up or down to move highlight, enter button to select. Well, I haven't got an enter button, so let's do the power button. Let's see what happens. Right, so I've got the Amazon sign. It's very dim though. Very, very dim. Yay, fire, look, here we go. Is this going to boot up or not? I wonder whether it's really dim because I cracked the screen there. I'd have to watch back the video and see how bright it was earlier. Excellent, here we go, check it out, charging. Right, hold on now, so. Charging, so do you know what, the uh, the digitizer's not working. So the touch screen isn't working, but we're definitely getting somewhere. So. Right, I need to look into why this digitizer is not... Oh, it's going to be... Is it going to be because I cracked it here? That could well be it, couldn't it? Oh, I can't believe that. Right, it's saying 51% anyway, so it looks like it is accepting some sort of charge. It's just it's really, really dim. Oh, there we go. So that's working as well, the, uh, the rotation thing. Right, I'm going to just uh, muck around with it for a bit. I'm thinking now that possibly because of the cracked screen here, that's why the digitizer's, digitizer's not working. But uh, at least we've got something here now. Maybe I can buy, maybe I can buy a spare screen for these or a spare digitizer. I, I really don't know. I've never looked into it. Right, okay, I'm going to get back to this when I know a little bit more about it. 
Okay, I know what's wrong with the digitizer. Again, it's my fault. Have a look here. So when I pick this out here, I uh, mustn't have done it carefully enough. And if you have a look, can you see that there's a rip? See, just there by the number one? So that's why the digitizer is not working. So I need to look at this really closely now to see if there's a way that I can possibly patch that up. Okay, it's absolutely tiny and I don't really think it's going to be repairable, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to use the fiberglass brush and a fiberglass pen. I'm just going to rub away at this golden part here to try to get the copper tracks back and go across to break. And then you never know, it might be possible to put a little bit of solder or something on it. Now to try and stop it ripping more, I'm going to put a little bit of tape at the back of it, a little bit of captain tape. Well I need to get the soldering iron set up now and see if I can somehow solder this back up. Right so this is going to be fun, as you can see they're absolutely tiny. The, this is the problem here, not necessarily the first one but these two. There's two right next to it, it looks like one but there's actually two there so I have to do that one these two, that one, and the one next to it as well. Now I thought I'd get away with not doing the first and the fourth, but look, they go along and there's a little via going through to the other side, so obviously it's connecting something on this side back through onto the other side. So now it's really tiny, so what I'm gonna use is, I've got a little bit of Cat6 cable, and it's stranded cable, and I've got the wires from there, and I think I'm gonna to try to use these on this particular setup. These are pure copper wires, so these are the strands from one of the cores. You can see how small, so there should be seven strands in each core, and each wire is, I don't know, whatever it is, 0.5 millimeters in diameter. So that's how small we're dealing, you can see it compared to my finger there. So here we go, let's give it a go. Right, okay, it's so the next day now, and I've been having a complete and utter nightmare with this. So the digitizer was completely a complete failure. It ripped off completely in the end. I couldn't manage to solder it because they were just, they were too close to each other, and the solder just kept jumping over from one to another. It was really hard because it's hard enough trying to solder onto these ribbon cables, and couple that with the fact that they were so, 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 so close to each other, it really was impossible. But that's not the end of the world because I can actually buy a replacement digitizer here, so the, the front cover, which will also get rid of this crack, for £18 on eBay, so that's, that's okay. Now, the problem I've got is it's still boot looping constantly. So I've plugged in my little meter here and it will stay on that and then it will go down to zero when it turns itself off and then I think it jumps up to point three for a couple of seconds and it goes back to 20 when it's boot looping so this is when the amazon signs on the screen here so it will just keep coming and going now when it was actually working because you did see at one stage it was working but i couldn't get into it because of the uh, digitizer wasn't working what i actually did is i got an on on the go cable usb on the go cable and i plugged in this little dongle for my keyboard and mouse here the little trackpad that allowed me into it, and basically I tested everything, the Wi-Fi and everything. Uh, the speakers, when they were soldered on, were working fine. Cameras were working fine, apart from the front-facing camera. That was really pixelated. It had kind of like green and lines across it. You could just about make out what was happening, but it was a bad image. But yet the rear-facing camera was working absolutely fine. But the main problem with it, well, not the main problem is the fact that it's not working, but the secondary problem is it's really dim. So I went onto the brightness and again using the mouse here I could move the brightness up and down but the only bit that made the difference was this first little bit here so basically you can move it all the way across and all the way back and it was only this bit that made a difference. From here to here it made no difference at all. Now it is usable but really it's not much brighter than what you see there so it's not like a normal it's not like a normal tablet whatsoever but if when, when it was working if I just tapped it off 
it would come back on fine every time I tapped it back on. But then when I went to shut down properly, so when I went to hold down the power button and then do you wish to turn it off? Yes. Since then, I haven't managed to get it back on. So in all the time I've been messing around with this, I've only actually had it boot up properly twice. I have tried every single combination without power, pulling the battery, putting the power in, putting the battery back in, holding the power button down, doing volume down, power, doing volume up power, volume uh, down and up and power at the same time. I must have done it about 60 or 70 times. I was trying to get it to boot back up for over one hour and it wouldn't work. Now, I do know what I'm doing because on this one here, you can see how easy it is. So all I have to do is volume down and power and look how easy it is to get into that menu. So let me hold down volume down and then power and I'm gonna keep them held now until the Amazon sign comes up and then I'm gonna let them go and you will see it will bring me into that menu that you've seen earlier on in the video on this faulty one. Yep, but no matter what I do, that will not work on this. There's no point in me showing it to you now I've tried it about 60 or 70 times, and again, you can see now it's boot looping. There you go, on, on again. I also tried putting it into fast boot, so you can get these special cables that basically short pins four and one, I believe it is, and then that will put it into fast boot. Now, interestingly, when I use this Xbox cable here, I know there's a chance that I could blow it here, but remember, it's not working anyway. If I go between pin one and pin four, can you see it will go to... Uh, there, it will go to white. Yeah, so I was doing that and then I was plugging the battery in. I was doing that and then I was plugging, remember with two hands, plugging the micro USB in. So to me, that would be the same as the fast boot cable and nothing's working. So what I'm gonna do now is, it's junk anyway, I am gonna start removing the chips to see if I can see any corrosion behind it. I believe 100% that this is a hardware problem, not a software problem. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Now remember, I haven't got another board to compare, so I haven't got a clue what it is. My meter's not showing up any faults in the capacitors, so I've gone across the diodes. To me, the ones that I've tested look to be okay. So, I know I've seen that there was a little bit of corrosion by this chip here. I'm sure this chip's not going to stop it from booting, maybe this chip is something to do with the camera. But again, I'm going to take it off, because hopefully it's going to be one of the easier ones to remove, and I've definitely seen corrosion on this side here, so I'm going to take that off. The chip I'm going to concentrate most of all on is this chip here, because when I trace the power, so basically these two on the left-hand side are the positive voltage, they look to be going over to these pins here. So I think this is the first chip that uh, determines stuff. Now, I can only ever get it to boot even uh, boot loop when I have a power cable in it. When I don't have a power cable in it, it will continue to do it, but not when, uh, uh, not to begin with. So if I get it booting, you know, uh, boot looping, then I can pop the power cable out. But if I just do the on and off button, then it will not work. Now I know the on and off button's working because I've got a short across here, but yet it's not, it's one of those ones where it latches. So you press it and then something will latch on to make it work. So I think I'm gonna concentrate on this one to begin with, because it's small, and then, and there was corrosion, and then I think I'm gonna go on to this one here. And then I'm gonna test it. If it's not working, I'm just gonna go chip by chip, and eventually, I suppose I'll have to do these two main ones, because the board's junk. Ugh, you know, I need to buy a new 17 pound screen for it anyway. It's really, really dim, and the front-facing camera doesn't work. So, again, this thing is pretty much worth what I paid for it, which is fair enough because it's still a learning experience. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. It's gonna take me a long time. I'm just gonna be fast forward through the whole thing. Obviously, you will see the outcome at the very end. Right, I can definitely see a little bit of corrosion on these two pins here, especially this one here. Doesn't look very good, so I'm just going to put some fresh solder on that. There's something in the middle of this chip that doesn't look right. It's like, uh, it looks like it's... the cover's missing. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's definitely a lump of metal in the middle. I thought it was just a fleck of dirt or something, but it's not. That doesn't look quite right. But still, I've got nothing to replace it with, so we'll just pop it back on.
Right, amazingly, I just did that chip and look, it's fired up straight away. Now that could be complete coincidence or maybe that chip was the thing causing the problem. I don't want to get my hopes up because this has fired up twice before. I won't know until it turns on and then I turn it off and then turn it back on again. It could be just pure coincidence. So let me just let that cycle through. So basically that is as bright as it gets, you can see. Right, let's turn it off. Actually, I'm going to have to get the little laptop up here because otherwise it's just going to do that. So you can see it's off now. When I turn it on, it will work. This will work forever now, just going on and off like that. It's when I shut it down completely. Let me get my little, uh, the little, not laptop, the little keyboard up. Right, I knocked the battery out by mistake. Okay. Well, that's the same as turning it off. So let's see now if it will. Uh, let's leave that in. Let's see if it will turn on purely on the battery. Right, so that's in there now. No, so it's not turning on purely on the battery, is it? Right, let's try it with the power again, see if it boots up. So let's do the normal sequence of what I do, which is basically unplug this, power in there, and then plug the battery in. Yeah, it's going to do it again. I can tell by the uh, by the uh, little USB meter. I wonder why it doesn't turn on without it being plugged into the USB charger. So can you see my little thing scrolling around here now? So let's go to unlock. There we go. Right, let me see if I can get the brightness any better than this. No, that's the brightness up full, you see. Can you see it doesn't make a difference? Watch, from there to there. Actually, it's not making a difference at all. I thought yesterday it did make a difference, but look. It doesn't make any difference at all. Right, let's go to power it off. And I'm going to try powering it on now, just purely on the battery again. Right, it's not liking that. No, and it's not liking that either. So it only likes it when the power's connected, and then you undo the battery, and then connect the battery up again. That's the only time it works. Yeah, and now it's going to come on again because this has jumped right the way up to 60 something, uh, 61 amps. Sorry, 0.61 amps. Right, I think I'm going to take off that chip that's near the battery connector because this is no good like this because you can't keep pulling the battery out the back. So. Uh, Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Now I know which way to put them back on because if you have a look at the board, one of the corners looks ever sl slightly different than the others. It's kind of like got a, it's filled in more, and that's where the dot goes. So there's a dot on one corner of the chip.
Doing that chip there didn't make any difference at all. It still just booted up like it did before, but I had to use the cable again. It didn't work just via the battery. But interestingly, I tried to do the volume down and the power button just to see if I could reset it back to factory settings. And now it's not booting up. It's doing the boot loop all over again, which is, uh, which is really weird. So I'm going to heat up this chip yet again. And I think I'm going to heat up a few things around here as well because I've, I've got a feeling that this is where most of the corrosion was on this side here. these and absolutely nothing so what I've just done now is I've just done this little one here which is a tiny BGA one so I'm just going to test it again now all right this is interesting the only thing I forgot what I did I did actually plug the camera in so it looks like when I put plug the camera in it's fade into boots so now I did it now I still have to have the power cable and stuff in but look I've got into this system now so what I'm going to do is I am actually going to reset this system I'm going to do a, a factory reset. And see if it makes any difference. So it's just optimising the system storage and applications. So this takes about 10 minutes to complete. And you can see there just about that the bar is working its way through. The screen is so dim. Right, so it's completely reset itself now, and now I have to set it up from the beginning again. So I'm just going to work my way through that. Right, it's installing updates now, which is a good thing. I'm hoping that when it's updated, it might actually sort out if it was any sort of software issue. Right, I'm having real problems here, and I'm really about to give up on this because I'm just spending too much time on it. So, uh, I've put my details into here so it can get the information off my Amazon tablet remember I reset it and what happens is it just keeps hanging up so it's got two minutes ago one minute ago and then it will go so far and then it will just stop and then it will fail and then I have to go through it all again right okay so I've restored this using my settings and the tablet itself when it's on is actually working okay camera's working I can go around the place obviously I can't use any of the touch features I'm having to use this keyboard here but it is actually working all right if you have a look now you can see I'm moving up and down and uh, yeah the sold the speakers back in that's all working Alexa's working watch this Alexa what's the weather like in Sydney Australia Alexa, home. Yeah, so I mean it is working. The problem is, if I just turn it on and off here, then it's fine. So for example, now if I tap this off here, you can see it goes off and then turn it back on again. And you will see now I've got that, uh, you know, the advertising as the home screen. So it's, uh, that's all working fine. But when I go to close this down now, it will not turn on again. So I'm just going to fast forward through that for you. Right, so it's powered off now, and if I go to turn it on again, holding the button in for a few seconds, and it doesn't matter what I do, I can hold it on for 30 seconds, 40 seconds, it makes no difference at all. So to get it to boot up, I have to get the power cable, and I have to pull the battery. and then put the battery back in and now it will boot up as normal so it's really weird that I have to keep doing that every single time every single time I want to turn it on 
So with this one, I'm unsure whether to take this any further because I need to spend money on the digitizer and the fact is it's uh, I still can't power it on and also it's really, really dim. So this seems a shame because it is nearly a working tablet but I think I'm going to go further and I think I'm going to take a look at more things on the board. The chance are, chances are I am going to break it completely but I, uh, I'm curious as to why it's so dim now even though before it was it was it was nice and bright so obviously I've done something to damage it and I'd like to see if I can rectify that so I'm going to work on this a little bit further and then I'll get back to the video and finish off right good news I have got the screen brighter than before it turns out that the fault was on this little inductor here so there's a tiny little inductor that just goes here near the ribbon cable which makes sense and what I did is I took it off. I tried to put one from a Nintendo Switch in, but it didn't boot up at all. I haven't got any other inductors to try. So what I've done is I've just bridged it with a little bit of wire. You can see that dodgy little bit of wire that I've just gone from one side to another. I've left it a little bit long. I don't know whether it should be long or short. I haven't got a clue. I presume in an inductor, it's a huge winding of wire going round. But it definitely is much brighter now. And also, I have a bit more control over the brightness. So I've got my little keyboard down here. If I go up the top here and drag down, watch this now. If I get this here and move it across, you can see it does vary. Look. See? Dim. So that's what it was like before. Wait till it goes vertical. There. Right, so that's what it was like before. And now I can put the brightness up now. Yeah, you see there. But it doesn't make a difference from there onwards. Obviously because that coil is not rated properly. But we're starting to make progress, so I'm just going to keep working through it and see what happens. Okay, it's time to call it a day. I reflowed various chips on here, all the ones apart from the ones under the shield, everything else you can see. And uh, it still doesn't turn on via the power button there. I still have to pop the battery out, plug in the power cable, put the battery back in, and then I can unplug the power cable. It will work via the battery then. But obviously, as soon as this battery goes flat, I'm going to have to take it apart again in order to repeat that process. So it's far from ideal. As well as that, it's unusable, and it's not worth me spending £16 on a digitizer when it's as dim as that. So unfortunately, with this, I think... Possibly I might be able to do a revisit video if I get lots of information from the viewers saying, oh yeah, this is wrong or that's wrong, the reason it's not latching on is because of this chip, then possibly I might be able to do something. But unfortunately, at this moment in time, I can't. I can't do any more. I've reached a level of my bad expertise and uh, I can't get it to work. So uh, yeah, but unfortunate and also annoying that I caused most of the damage on this. But still, that's the way it goes. You win some, you lose some and I definitely lost on this one. If you still enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.